The hour was not of Thursday night, nor yet of Friday morn, but t'was the time when night is dead, the morning still unborn. The moon discovered not a cloud except the Milky Way, a somber, weird, and wizard light did make a semi-day. Long, lean shadows lay around from statuary trees, as masts of vessels in the calm reflected on the seas. And I was slowly walking on, affected by the gloom. Augustine's chapel on my right seemed truly Augustine's tomb. Dark, solemn, dull it looked as it stood in the moonlight there. I glanced at it unconsciously, and then I stopped to stare. There was a man in front of it, a gownsman, still as dead. I looked at him. I looked again. My God, he had no head. My feet stopped going. My blood stopped flowing. My muscles petrified. I stood and stared, and never dared to move to either side. At last, full dazed, a foot I raised and feebly tried to go. But all in vain I must remain. A voice, unheard, said no. Then with a stately, measured tread, the spirit moved to me. Closer, closer came it, and more clearly I could see. It was a man without a head. He wore a draping gown. One hand was pointed straight at me, the other pointed down. And as he slowly drew to me, I slowly drew to him. Unable to resist, I went. My sight began to dim. The finger pointing to me said, On earth no longer dwell. I need your life. I'll send you to. The downward hand said, Hell. We moved until a foot or so was tween his hand and me. The finger, level with my face, was all my eyes could see. And then I heard a hollow voice. I saw no human face, yet words I heard, and they were real. They came from empty space. In dreadful gones the specter spoke. I waited long for you. They took my head. I need one, and I think that yours will do. Two bony hands reached out at me, oh God, they seized my head. And I till now so still and stark, all limp and loose, fell dead. Came then a dream, I saw a stream of boiling blood to his full. I stood along in boat of bone, t'was made of a monster's skull. The current rushed me onwards, twin the sunlit shining shores, all full of ghastly grinning heads piled high in countless scores. I looked as chance in horror at the endless awful scene. I heard sweet magic music notes with discords in between. And then I woke, I lay all limp. T'was just at breaking dawn. I raised my hands and felt, and felt, oh God, my head was gone. He had it, he had taken it, that demon in the gown. I cursed him, then I heard a laugh in mockery resound. I stayed deep buried under earth for one entire week. And in that time, I oft resolved another head to seek. So on each Thursday night in June, the day and month I died, I promenade the chapel yard. I'm led by an unseen guide. I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. And some night between one and nine, they're sure to come, unthinkingly, a man with head like mine. I'll charm him with a magic spell, I'll make him stand and stare, and then I'll steal his head away, leave him standing there. And he will then rove round at night, as I, without a head, while I shall fly far, far away. 
to live with the happy dead. <clears throat> That's the Ballad of the Headless Gownsman, written in 1908. It's not really true, not all of it, at least. The legend of Wincliffe Hall strikes nearer to the mark, but that's neither here nor there. Let me see. He had something he wanted me to tell you. Other than just the poem, I mean. Right. Concealed with the disc you're now listening to is a 6 by 6 grid of seemingly random letters. This grid of letters is, in fact, a 10-letter word encrypted using a method of steganography known as a grill cipher. In order to decode a grill cipher, you need a key. The key to this cipher can be found in a room somewhere in Swanee. There is only one door to enter the room, and then three more doors once inside. Well, uh, it's, it's not very helpful. Um, I want to give you some sort of clue, but that insidious hobgoblin told me clearly that it cannot describe the doors, or any part of the room for that matter. Well, let's see. Okay, I've got something. Listen closely. 